Are you part of a nonprofit organization, a youth group looking to raise cash for your cause? Stay tuned at the end of this video to learn how you can bring the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation to your town live, featuring the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Lorndorf. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, welcome to another installment of Memories and Legends. Gary, you weren't with me last Thursday. I felt out of place. Where was I? I don't know where you were. I oh. know where I was. <laughs> okay. We're trying to make sure the uh, the lights weren't too hot for John Cena Sr.'s toop glue. Wow. But that's a different story. I, I, I don't want to get in the middle of that. For a different time. No, no. But Gary, I'm telling you, brother, the tour is not that one. Not, not, that, not one. that Cena? No, not that one. Oh, okay. Um, we got, still have one more live event left at the Beyond Body Slams Tour. We're wrapping it up this weekend. Let's talk about oh, it. Oh, the Big Apple. Queens, New York, everyone. You know what? It's Queens Theater. Would you believe there's free parking at this theater? No, I, I still think you're lying about that. I'm amazed. I'm amazed that there's any theater you can go to in New York and there's free parking because it's part of a, a park. Remember the old World's Fair and they had the big globe? Mm -hmm. You remember that? Yeah. You saw pictures, pictures of, of it, it. Not right, right, right. Physically, there, that's right. where this is. It was uh, part of the uh, New York State Pavilion, and now it's a, a theater complex. So there are three theaters. Um, this is on Veterans Day, so a lot of people have off the day before. Right. There is no Long excuse. Weekend, right. Sure. And it's a small theater. Um, it's only seats about 90 people. Wow. Yeah. So I would think that in a city of 9 million people, we should be able to fill this thing. Pack that up. <laughs> and I tell you, all uh, the complete ticket and in event information will be continuing to scroll on the bottom of the screen yeah. throughout the duration of the program. We want to see you there live. Gary, I'd love to be there on Saturday. Well, you're welcome to come. Well, yeah, maybe uh, someone going down on Greyhound can throw me in their suitcase if they got a big one, right? Dave <laughs> LaGreca from uh, Busted Open on Sirius XM is going to be the host. Oh, really? That oh, so night. you're going to have a partner in crime? Yes. Oh, that's great. I'm So I'm looking forward to it. I'd love to try and be there. We're going to try and make it happen, but you know, MWF Studios, there's always something happening. But Gary, we had some great conversations so far when you've been with us on this show. Uh, there is a lot of recent chat about this kind of old school, uh, the area you were around in at WCW, so I thought, why not take a couple of these topics and let's make a great show about it with great wrestling discussion, as that's what Memories and Legends is all about to me. Okay. There's, I have no plan here, so you have no idea whatever what's coming. you throw at me, I'm going to hear for the first time. It's almost like when George Steele used to attack you. You didn't know what was coming. I'm agile. I'm agile. All right. All right. I heard that. <laughs> Gary, let me run this one to you. And yep, I, yep. I'm interested to know your thoughts. Oh, no. The NWA. Yes. The name, uh, the company, I guess, was purchased by a Smashing Pumpkins frontman, Billy Corgan, a very intelligent guy. I met him at the Cauliflower Alley Club uh, several years back. He did a great seminar. Our friend here in the audience was with me for that one as well. You posted on your Facebook, always great matches and pictures and whatnot on your Facebook. We yes. implore you to go uh, give it a like, give it a follow, whatever the proper term is for that. GMC for real. And you are for real, brother. <laughs> well, that's my address on no, Facebook. No, I know, I know. GMC for real, I'm just number giving four. it the emphasis. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> what you think this NWA has a fighting chance? Absolutely. Why? Because because of the minds that are behind it. If you take old school psychology with the wrestlers of today being much more athletic than the 70s, 60s wrestlers and you have a mind like Billy Corgan who can knows entertainment. Now you have the advantage of the internet so that you don't need syndicated or broadcast television. That's a big plus. Yes, I mean, you have iPay-per-views. Eye, eye so it has all of the potential. Now, I have to admit, maybe it's because I want it to happen, so I want it to be successful so much that maybe I'm tilting it a little bit. But, um, I mean, it has all of the major elements that it needs. Plus, it's got money behind it. So if you if you... You've got a financier, you've got someone that's into entertainment and is a master at marketing things, you've got your iPay-per-views, 
you've got your old school mentality and you've got your current wrestlers who are more athletic than ever, how could you would have to want to lose to make this not happen? Well, oh, Gary, I, <laughs> I disagree with you on that, buddy. I think they're going to have, and that's a great thing. It's great conversation, respectful conversation. I think they have such a difficult challenge here with this. I think the NWA has been pissed on and whored out for so long. I think he would have been better off spending his money trying to come up with a, a unique brand of its own. I'll say this, I certainly hope it's a great success because yep. that's not good for Billy Corgan. That's good for professional wrestlers. That's good for professional wrestling. That's good prof for professional wrestling fans. Mm -hmm. It could generate more, even if the, there was a television platform available to them, or the unique ways there are to publicize your product nowadays online. Uh, it's good for everybody. It creates more jobs, and I think there aren't enough of them. Now, I didn't say that it was going to be successful in a month, two months, six months, or a year. It's going to take time. He's got a multi, multi-year plan. Um, and you are correct in that it's more difficult to, just from the optics, to turn something around than to create from the beginning. But he has a great respect for the tradition and the history of the NWA. So maybe because of that, we'll have a product that you and I can enjoy more. He's not trying to recreate the wheel. Let's see what happens. And you know, I hate to say this, but it is true that many fans who have just become fans in the last 10, 20 years, they don't know anything about the NWA. Right. So you're not trying to turn them around. You're trying to turn old timers around. So maybe there, are, there isn't that much of the audience that has been turned off to the NWA because they don't know anything much about it. Well, I had a conversation with someone I truly respect not too long ago, and they said NWA nowadays stands not worth anything. Um, How old were they? How old were they? In their 40s. Right. Yeah. But I'm talking about the people that are in their 20s. What do they know about the NWA? Unless they have you know, gone to YouTube and, right. you know, unless they're historians and they want to, and I love those, those folks, you know, that the young people that care about the tradition and want to see where it all evolved from. But your, your younger audience, they're not turned off by the NWA because they don't know much about it. You know what, maybe that's a great philosophy. I like to have these discussions because you can look at it through someone else's eyes. I think it's going to be an extreme challenge for the man. I know in Sports Illustrated, he said he has a 20-year vision, which I think is great. I don't think any promotions have that kind of vision nowadays, which frustrates me, but I won't go in that direction. But maybe, well, maybe, it's maybe because it could be less has, of a hill to climb if he goes a different direction. Maybe he has the capital to make, to last 20 years. Um, I'm sure that he does. But I agree with you because I never, when I wrote what I wrote on my Facebook page, I never thought about a tarnished NWA name. So for us to share these thoughts, Great conversation. Interesting. That's what it's all You're about, You're wrong, Gary. but interesting. Thank you. <laughs> Do you think that TNA would have benefited in the long term if he wound up with the assets to that company where it was, I don't know how relevant it was, but it had some relevancy to no. it? No. No. How come? Because he is autonomous now. He doesn't have to please any corporate entity. And it's either going to sink or it's going to swim on Billy Corgan. He's not going to be able to say, oh, those impact folks, or oh, those TNA folks. You know, it's, it's all him. I wish he had more to play with than the Houston Wrestling Library, because WWE owns everything other than that. But They own you know, everything that I've done, other than the, the Savoldi stuff <laughs> that I did up here in New England. You know, I don't think that check is coming for the Savoldi Library anytime soon, but you never know. They're going to run out of libraries you know at some Let point. Let me tell you something that's going to really, well, maybe it won't surprise you, but... Okay. Out of, of all of the TV that I've done with WWF, with AWA, with WCW, with NWA, um, and S Independence, the Savoldis are the only ones that I ever receive, received a residual check from. Really? Absolutely. Really? Never anything from WWE over the years? No, nothing. Really? Yeah, we have a, I have a beef about that. Uh, we, that's another episode, but I remember we spoke about it at one point. Yeah. The Savoldis were the only one. Now, what kind of residual check would you get from them? Well, it wasn't. Well, did they have merchandise or tapes? or I was, what would it be for, I was on their I broadcast. Guess. I know, but wouldn't that your, your payoff for those shows be the well, payment they, for your work? Because the residual check, isn't that like merchandising and such? Well, they probably sold DVDs of the shows that oh, I was on. Good for you. Yeah. Everyone always called them. Remember, there was a good friend of a uh, technical director in the back, the 
Matt Logan was his name. He said they were known as the Ripoff Brothers. Not for me. They not, took care not of Not from my perspective. Hey, they're Italian. They can't In be fact, all In fact, I'll right? tell you something. This is old school. Angelo Savoldi. Um, loved Angelo Savoldi. He wanted to write a book. Mm -hmm. So they got in touch with me to see if I would co-author with him. I went up to his house in um, Persephone Lake in New Jersey, northern New Jersey, and sat with, now Angelo was, he was in his 90s mm -hmm. already, and um, his wife made, put out a nice cold cut spread, we had very nice sandwiches, like very proper Italian kind of stuff, like I remember my grandparents being. Mm -hmm. And we sat, and you would, his mind was like so crisp. He would not only tell me stories about what happened when like he was in his 30s or 20s at a hotel in St. Louis. He would tell me the room number. He would tell me what street the hotel oh, was on. That great. It, he was either making it all up or he had an incredible <laughs> memory. It was like, wow. So I took the information, and he had incredible stories. Um, so I took the information and I brought it to my publisher to see if they would be interested. It didn't didn't work no, out. No, that's too bad. Because he had such, he's now he's not with us anymore, and we lost all of those stories. And I, that goes back to the point I think we mentioned on one of the first episodes you were on here. That's what I want this show to become: memories and legends. Not everybody is going to get that individualized WWE DVD release. I'm and smiling. there's so many people that have great stories to tell and <laughs> I'm share. I'm smiling and, and I'm laughing because do you know something about my health that I don't know? No. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. You think Gary. I don't have that many days left? Let's let's find out what we can from Capetta now while he's still with us. We got to bleed him dry for each story we can get. Well, anyway, we talked the end of. All right, please, Gary. At least wait. Let's get through the next half hour at least. All right. Wrestling fans, we're going to take a brief time out. When we come back, we're going to have a little bit more of this old school flair that's been in the news of late. Stand by. We'll be right back. The groundbreaking event, War Games, returns. Houston on Saturday, November 18th. The superstars of NXT compete in two rings, side by side, surrounded by steel. Three teams enter, one team survives. It's NXT TakeOver War Games in Houston, Saturday, November 18th. Tickets are available. Through the ages, across generations, we've searched to know everything. Now, our biggest questions will be answered. It's absolutely everything you need to know about WWE. From inside the ring facts to beyond the ring history, everything WWE is right here. Absolutely everything you need to know. Available now online or wherever books are sold. Houston on Sunday, November 19th. It's WWE Survivor Series. The one time a year Raw and SmackDown Live go head to head. I must beat a man who you people think is unbeatable. Your challenge is accepted by the undisputed conqueror. Champion Battles Champion has Raw and SmackDown Live collide. Raw is under siege. This is an onslaught. Plus, free agent John Cena returns. It's WWE Survivor Series pay-per-view on Sunday, November 19th. Tickets are available. Wrestling fans, welcome back to Memories and Legends. I'm Dan Marotti, joined by my good friend. Uh, again, some called him the Michael Buffer of professional wrestling, even when he was working with them. We're talking about Gary, Michael Capetta. Gary, interesting talk about the NWA. Flashing back to the, the good old days of the NWA in the 80s, a WWE has decided to go a little old school. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday night, November the 25th, oh. from Greensboro, North Carolina. Big mistake. They, oh, this is going to be a good talk then. They are bringing back Big mistake. the Starcade name, no. not for a pay-per-view, but for a house show, a yeah. non-televised doesn't event. matter. Oh. The reason I think it's a big mistake is people are never going to be satisfied because it's got such a, a majesty, it's got such a history, and they connect it with flair in the main event, with Rock and Roll Express or... Jim Cornette and the Midnight Express. It's, it's, it's etched in people's minds in a certain way. So who, who's going to wrestle there? I know Rock and Roll Express will be there. But the current WWE folks, they're not going to be able to create something that is no more. I mean, it's, 
are th are they going to get dressed up and look like Manny Fernandez? I mean, like, what are they what are they going to do? I'm going to guess that's not the route they're going to go, but they've surprised me before. I mean, I what are they going to do to live Manny, up to Manny that? Fernandez comparisons that night? What are they going to do to live up to the tradition? Well, some now, could, war games is different because that's an event, right? So you have two rings, you have two cages, but what you're talking about here is. It had to do with the intensity, the rivalries, the kick-butt wrestling. They're not going to transform their product into that. They're going to give you WWE. Well, do you think it could be a fun nostalgia night for them to have Starcade? No. No. Do you think that I this think people are going to be disappointed. Do you think it's a direct shot at what's become very popular around Thanksgiving time in the area, an event called Wrestlecade. I'd be surprised. Really? Yeah. You don't think that one had I was at Wrestlecade a couple years ago. I remember that. Yep. I did the um, hmm, Matt Hardy, Jeff Jarrett. I introduced their match mm -hmm. that night. And they had a great uh, fan fest in the daytime. This year they're going all weekend. I don't think WWE cares. You know? Really? You know, they're too big. Well, they went after WrestleCon at WrestleMania week a few years back. Yeah, so. but WrestleCon was latching on to WrestleMania. Now you're good talking point. about good WWE point. latching on to, to WrestleCade? That's a good point. Oh, no. Could you say that maybe NWA slash WCW did, did it themselves in when it came to Starcade, where it was in its home of Greensboro, and then it kind of, they did split shows with Greensboro in Atlanta before they slapped those fans in the face, so they say down there, when they chose to go off to Starcade 87 in Chicago. In Chicago, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they should have kept the tradition. I, when I think of, for instance, the Great American Bash, I think Baltimore. I don't know. I mean, that's, that's the one that I remember. May not have, I don't know how many years it was in, in Baltimore. But to me, that's Halloween Havoc, I think, of Philadelphia. Yeah, so if why they would... you play the name game, sure. Yeah. So why they would change that, yeah, I don't yeah. know why. At the end of the day, again, as we've talked about the wrestling libraries, WWE bought it. They own it. They can do whatever they want with it. You can only hope uh, that they treat it with genuine respect for the fans that do remember it and maybe add uh, some knowledge and enjoyment to the fans that have no idea what Stockade 83 was. Yeah, I mean, maybe they'll bring Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone in. That would be a, a step forward. I know that Cody Rhodes was, uh, yep. he had a strong opinion about Starcade being resurfaced. He felt that because his father uh, helped develop the idea that it certainly should have been an invite extended to uh, Goldust, Dustin Rhodes, who's still with the company, and Cody's wife also had some comments. I don't know how much she knew about Starcade 83, but your thoughts on that? Do you think WWE at this point owes uh, that sort of courtesy to bring folks like that in? Honestly, I, I don't know how would they know so far in advance that Dustin wouldn't have been part of it? Maybe Dustin told his brother he wasn't booked. Right. I, I mean, I don't know. Cody Rhodes. Oh, I, I'm a huge proponent of Cody Rhodes. Great um, talent. Great talent. Um, this is going a little bit off. Can we go, go a little, sure. little off topic? He um, may be a legend someday. You don't know. Um, you know what? He's a forerunner. I love the fact that he's independent. I love the fact that he wasn't happy with his WWE experience. And instead of staying there where it's very comfortable, where he could collect a paycheck and just go out and do what they wanted him to do, he left. He took a huge risk. Now most guys, as you know, who leave the WWE and go on the indie circuit, eh, what do they have, like an 18 month run before their before stock? Before they can make good money, maybe not even 18 months. Right, before and they then have their to stock goes way down. He took this risk and he created Cody, not Cody Rhodes, Cody, and um, became so popular all over the country, became so popular in Japan, became so popular in Europe, wherever he wanted to work. Now this is a true independent contractor. contractor. Yep. Um, and by the time he's finished, I know he just signed with Ring of Honor, but he still maintains a certain amount of autonomy. He can still work in Japan. He yeah. can still work in Mexico. He can still work when he's not booked with Ring of Honor. So that he can decide for himself, I want to stay home this month. I want to stay home with my, my family. Or, now look at the merchandising he's doing with the Young Bucks. You know, and those, they're in brick and mortar stores. So that by the time that he's through with his Ring of Honor experience, with 
if he wants to go back to the WWE, they're going to be going to him and saying, Cody, will you wrestle for me? Sure. To me, that's a true democratization between the wrestler and the promoter. And how and often do you only, see that? The closest thing we've ever seen was someone like a Bruiser Brody. That's what I was just going to throw at you. Unbelievable. Yeah. So the fact Cody Rhodes can do that, can market himself, the internet helps. He has that advantage that they didn't have years ago. But usually when a wrestler gets so uh, famous and so over, they don't think about the locker room. Right. They don't think it, they just think about themselves. Right. Sergeant Slaughter was an exception to that back in the 80s where he stood up for the dolls and he said, hey, you know, you're starting to put these dolls out, these videotapes at the time, where's our money? And he was immediately fired back in the 80s. He and did think well about for himself. how hot he was. Right. And yeah, and he 80s, was huge. Yeah. And, but he still did well for himself. Sure, sure. Um, but not too many guys will stand up for the rest of the boys. Um, I think that he's a tra Cody's a trailblazer along with the Young Bucks. And, and honestly, I, I've never seen the Young Bucks wrestle, so I have no idea you know, what, they, what the appeal is. Yeah. But I don't need to know because every time they put a video out, they have millions of, of viewers. Yeah. It's not exactly my cup of tea, but at the same time, I know that they're being very successful for themselves and they're a success for the wrestling companies they work with. And like you said, their merchandise is selling very well, it, not on wrestling-themed websites, but in stores in the you know, everyday shopping mall. So yeah. what does that tell you? And the last night that I saw Cody, he was a little kid. Mm -hmm. So um, I ran into him a few months ago. And uh, you know, reminiscing a little bit about Dusty, and I told him the last time that I, I was with Dusty was uh, when Dusty came in to do uh, an appearance with Ring of Honor, mm -hmm. and I was working with Ring of Honor. He arrives... Cody arrives at the shows, three-piece suit. I don't get that. Very professional. It is, but I don't get that. Well, did you question it when Pedro Morales did? Pedro I was, Morales. I, see, always... I wasn't around for that. No, oh. I wasn't around for that. That was. What is there to get? He's he's being, he's presenting. It's a nice image. It's it, almost like you you think back to photos you saw of Luthez when he showed up at the arenas in a suit when he was the NWA World Champion back in the fifties. If that's the image he's trying to present, I think that's great. But it's just so different than what you see from everybody else. And that's know? the point. Sure. That he's, he sticks out. And he's genuinely like a really nice guy. Yeah. You'll love this. This is funny. Sure. Well, I don't think it's funny, but you'll think it's funny. All right. Maybe. So he said to me, Gary, he said, um, let me give you my number, you know, so that if you ever need anything, let me know. That's how nice he is. So I, I go into my pocket and I pick out my, my flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to him, Cody, I wouldn't even know how to put a number in here. Oh, he said, give it to me. And he puts his number in there. He says, oh, it's under CR. So He's just genuine. He's just a really nice guy. I hope great success for him, no matter where he goes. Again, if he can make a nice full-time living calling his own shots, to me, no pun intended, that's the wrestling dream. And maybe when the Ring of Honor, his stint there, let's, let's, let's go full circle. All right. Um, when he's done there, maybe he won't look at WWE. Maybe he'll look at the NWA. <laughs> Maybe now you see you're saying, oh, that is impossible. <laughs> That's laughable, Gary Michael Capetta. Hey, if he's got the money, and the platform continues to generate more and more eyeballs, where it can generate more and more revenue, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Absolutely. Is it likely today? No. no. But is it impossible? Absolutely not. I agree. I agree. There's nothing that I that I have. I'm not a fortune teller. I mean, I can't see into the future and say, oh yeah, Corgan's going to be ready for him and. But it could happen. Hey, stranger things have happened. And if it ever happens, I want you to dig the, this tape out. We'll have a special. I want you to GMC broadcast remembers. it. You heard it from GMC first. Now let me throw this one out at you, Gary. I kind of disagree with the stockade gripe that he had. Dusty Rhodes himself was only on five out of the 18 stockades, even if he did help create the experience. What gets me about Cody Rhodes and I have to try and walk a fine line because WWE is very kind and generous with me, but I do not like the fact that they would not let him use the Rhodes name. Mm. I think um, maybe you're missing something here. What am I missing, Gary? Enlighten just, me. Maybe Cody's just tweaking them a little. What do you mean? Maybe it's just not all that important to him, and he was just trying to cause stir a little stuff. You don't think his father's name was that important to him? Oh, I do think it was important. It was, right. Of course, he worships his father. But, I, but in this instance, you know, the same way that he and the, and the Young Bucks 
went to a WWE event, you know, with the... Yeah, they're, they're toying. They're having a good time. I tell you, with the cease and desist orders that WWE sent out for their merchants, not Cody, but some of the other ones, I don't know how much I'd be laughing, but that's a different story for a different time, too. Yeah, they're just tweaking. All right, well, maybe you're right, Gary. I just hope that's one thing that comes full circle, and he can be who he very rightfully so should be. As a human being, that insults me. But I don't, again, I don't want to go too far off the deep end with that. Gary, real quick, uh, War Games, the match beyond NXT is bringing it back. Not the old four-on-four. Four. J.J. Dillon coin flip. It's going to be three teams of three. A little different than what you saw back in the, the golden ages. Your thoughts on uh, where WWE kind of had no interest in bringing it to one of their pay-per-view events. It's going to be on an NXT special yeah. from Houston, Texas. I, I, you know, I think there's more chance that that something can come of that because as i said before they're taking an event a match concept which they've done before just so they don't do the chamber of horrors please <laughs> please don't duplicate that you don't want to see abdullah in the chair no go, i don't want to see uh, no abdullah sizzle no 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 no, no. <laughs> but th this is very different from um, you saw a lot of sizzle in the day <laughs> that was too much sizzle for even gmc <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it, it's, it's a whole different thing. You know, the reason that I think uh, Thanksgiving weekend's going to flop is because you can't recreate the event. But you can recreate a match. A match. Yeah. It's a big difference. I'm looking forward to it. I don't know if you're going to go out of your way to see it, but I, I am. No, I won't. No, you won't. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a message on Facebook and let you know what I thought. How about okay. that? Okay. All right, wrestling fans. You heard it from Gary Michael Capetta. We're going to take a brief time out. We'll be back to wrap up the show with more Memories and Legends. Stand by. Houston on Monday, November 20th. Feel the thrill of the new era Monday Night Raw with a massive main event. Release the house. Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose reunite as a shield as they return to Houston for the first time in three years to battle The Miz, Cesaro, and Sheamus in a six-man tag team match. It's WWE Raw, live in Houston, Monday, November 20th. Tickets and ringsetter packages are available. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to let you know how the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation can come to your city live to help raise cash for your nonprofit cause. Experience the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation live in your city throughout New England, the tri-state area, down through the Carolinas, out to our friends in the Midwest and beyond. If your nonprofit organization is looking for an interactive turnkey experience while putting the fun into fundraising, you've met the perfect tag team partner to work with every step of the way. The MWF offers a variety of packages for groups of almost any size, from our live events at the Boston Garden, the Kowloon Entertainment Dining Complex, and the legendary Suffolk Downs, to high school gyms and function halls. We've presented live events everywhere and anywhere. Since 2001, the MWF's mission has been simple. Keep the kids off the streets. Under the leadership of President David Reese, we bring the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow to your town. Not for a wrestling show, but an event that features action-packed in-ring wrestling, autograph, pose photo opportunities, Q&A sessions, and so much more. It's the best of sports and entertainment. The week of your event, we can add on to the endeavor with anti-bullying campaigns, library meet and greet reads, youth sport concussion seminars, and more. Our live events are fit for fans of any age from 5 to 95. This fall is part of our new Kids Club program. We offer live event experiences exclusively for the youngest of fans. On the flip side, we can produce a tailor-made event for fans of an older demographic as well. We work with you every step of the way to get the word out to fans near and far on our local television offerings and to over 50,000 fans and growing on our social media platforms. Your success is our success. If your group has had enough of candy bar and wrapping paper sales and has the energy to team with our passionate fan base, bringing the NWF experience to your community is the answer to put smiles on faces while raising cash for your cause. Contact us today to get the ball rolling for your custom-made event that you'll want to bring back year after year to your community. Don't just take it from us. Here are the folks we've teamed up with in the past.
Houston on Tuesday, November 21st. The New Era SmackDown Live returns with a huge double main event. See AJ Styles collide with Jinder Mahal in a Houston street fight for the WWE Championship. Plus, Randy Orton, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Bobby Roode team up to battle Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Dolph Ziggler in a massive six-man tag team match. It's WWE SmackDown Live in Houston, Tuesday, November 21st. Tickets and ringsider packages are available. Wrestling fans, welcome back to Memories and Legends. We talked old school NWA, new school NWA, old school stockade, new school stockade, war games. I didn't even get a chance to touch upon how bad most of the stockades you rang outs were. Oh. You got a couple of good ones, but man, when they did those battle bowls and different episode, how about that? Wow. Uh, this Saturday night, I'm ready. I told you earlier, I'm, I've been working the uh, the iPhone. Yeah. Talk to Linda Marotti. I don't know if she's going to let me come down. You know, she was mad about missing the Topsfield Fair when we were taping this, but I'm hoping <laughs> I'm going to be in Queens again. Queens, New York, this Saturday, 7:35, Queens Theater. Um, if people haven't gotten their tickets by now, well, you need to get them now because it's a small, small venue. 90 seats. 90 seats, that's it. Hey, we had a great time in Worcester back in February. Yep. Great theater. I can't wait to see what Queens is. Even if I can't make it, I know the fans are going to have an exceptionally good time. They'll get value for their personal time and they'll get value for their ticket money spent, and I think that's very important, whether you're talking about something wrestling-related or anything related. Yeah, I love doing the stage show. Uh, folks that come out, they, when they leave, they say, oh, that was fun, you know, and I learned something. So as a, as a former teacher, when you can inform and entertain at the same time, that's really cool, you know, because people are absorbing information but not even realizing it because they're having so much fun. So and not only will you hear the stories from... Um, the 70s, 80s, 90s, and the 2000s, 40 plus years, believe it or not, but you'll see the giant screen video overhead. So as I'm talking about Mick Foley losing his ear, you'll see it happen because I have exclusive footage of the match where he lost his ear. Wow. And it wasn't a televised event. No, it was it not. Was it was a, over a in Europe. It was a camcorder uh, yeah. recorded event by, by a fan. So yeah, come on out. If you're in the New York area, northern New Jersey, southern Connecticut, Come on out and visit GMC. Wrestling fans, it is as engaging and interactive as it gets. It is the final tour stop of 2017 that I know of for the Beyond Body Slams tour. Gary, it's going to be a great time. And I understand you're going to be back with me at least one more time next week. Ooh. It's going to be good. We what did I do wrong? Topic. Did I do something wrong? Well, Reno said he couldn't do it. So oh, it's going okay. To be, you're, you're going to be chain me here? Us. I'll be for a week. Well, we're not going to go in that direction, oh, Gary. Okay. Please, it's a family program. <laughs> again, Michael Capetta and Dan Marotti, until we speak again. Just so I have my JR barbecue sauce, there I'll be okay go. for a week. You and yours. Just give me a straw. Be well. <laughs> Providence, feel the thrill as the New Era Monday Night Raw returns just in time for the holidays so you can hashtag best night of my life with nonstop action and all your favorite superstars. No filter. It's WWE Raw live on Monday, December 18th. Tickets and ringsider packages are available.